Hello, welcome back. We're going to look at the proof of the alternating series test. So remember that an alternating series is a series whose terms are alternately positive and negative. One example of an alternating series that we examined in the prior video was the alternating harmonic series, negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n. This is a series that converges even though its absolute value series, 1 over n, does not. So the alternating series test provides a way for us to determine whether or not one of these series converges or diverges, in particular, convergence. So I'd like to go over the proof. So the idea is we consider the b sub n's to be a positive sequence of numbers, and the negative 1 to the n minus 1 is what we're multiplying by to make it alternate. So if it's true that the terms of the sequence are decreasing, so every term along b sub 4 is bigger than b sub 5, which is bigger than b sub 6, so that the overall value of each of these terms is, is shrinking, and it's shrinking to the point where the limit of the nth term is actually 0, then that's what determines that the series is convergent. So remember that when we talk about whether or not a series is convergent, a series converges if its sequence of partial sums converges. So what I'd like to do is alternately consider the odd and even partial sums. Okay, so let's look at the even partial sums. What I mean by an even partial sum is I mean one where the subscript is for an even number. So it's a sum of an even number of terms. So we could start with s sub 2. So that's going to be the first term b1 minus b2. We know that b2 is less than or equal to b1, so I'd like to point out that we know that b1 minus b2 is a positive number, so s2 is positive. Now, additionally, s4 is b1 minus b2 plus b3 minus b4, and we can consider this the sum of two positive numbers, again, for the same reason b3 is bigger than b4, or equal to, and this means that when I add b3 minus b4, that's also positive. Okay, and so s4 must be positive for this reason. Then moving on with s6, we would group again, since we have all these even pairs. Now also, since every time I'm adding something, I'm adding a positive number, I actually have that the sequence of partial sums the, for the even ones is actually an increasing sequence. So whenever the partial sum corresponds to an even number, this is an increasing sequence because when I consider the next two terms of the series that I've added on, that's always contributing another positive number and therefore the size of the partial sum grows. So it's an increasing sequence. S2 is less than or equal to S4, which is less than or equal to S6, so on and so forth. Now, if we've established that a sequence of partial sums happens to be not just increasing but bounded above, that was all we needed. We had that dichotomy for a positive series. So the next step is to establish there's an upper bound. So here's why we can regroup this s sub 2k in a different way. So remember, s sub 2k would be b1 minus b2 plus b3 minus b4 plus b5 minus b6 plus b sub 2k minus 1 minus b sub 2k. So just kind of keep on adding. Okay. Now the first time what we did is we grouped terms so that um, the b sub 1, uh, so that we paired like an odd with an even. Now I'm going to group in a different way. I'm going to separate off the first term and I'm going to rewrite the rest of it, this whole chunk, as a subtraction, okay? So s sub 2k is going to be b1 minus b2 but then I was adding b3, so that's like a minus a minus. Then minus b4, because b4 had a negative coefficient, but b5 was positive before, so minus a minus. So then the next one would be minus b6 minus b7, so on and so forth. The last, we'd have minus 
B2K minus 2 minus B2K minus 1. So these are the two next to last terms before B2K. And then lastly, subtracting off B2K. Now remember that every single term, um, every B sub N is positive, And every single one sequentially gets smaller. So B2 minus B3 is a positive number that I'm subtracting. So this is, I'm subtracting positive numbers or greater than or equal to. So every one of these, because B6 is bigger than B7, what I've subtracted off is a, is a number, so on and so forth, and B2K also was positive. So I've taken B1 and I've subtracted off all these numbers. As a result, we get that S sub 2K is bounded above by B1 because every even partial sum is equal to B1 minus a, a collection of positive numbers. Isn't that cool? All right, so we've proven from this, we've proven that the sequence S sub 2K is convergent because we proved it was increasing and bounded above. Well, what if it's only the even partial sums that converge? We better consider the odd ones. So let's look at the odd partial sums. Well, notice that the 2K plus first partial sum is the even one plus the next term in the sequence, so b sub 2k plus 1. Therefore, the limit as k goes to infinity of an odd partial sum, if it exists, would have to be equal to the limit of s sub 2k, which we know has a limit because of the fact that we said it was convergent, plus limit as k goes to infinity of b sub 2k plus 1, so the kth odd term in the bk sequence. But if we go back and look at the assumptions we made in the alternating series test, we made the assumption that the B sub n's approach zero. Well, if the B sub n's approach zero, certainly the odd terms from within the B sub n sequence must also approach zero. So because of that, I have that this is approaching zero, and therefore I'm getting that the limit of the odd numbered partial sums must be equal to the limit of the even numbered partial sums. And I know this limit, the e even one exists because we proved it was a monotonic and bounded series or sequence. All right, so I've established that using these two facts, both that every term of B sub n must be smaller than the one that came before it, and the fact that every term of B sub n was positive, and the limit of those terms approach zero, together that established for me that when the series alternates, as long as those terms shrink to zero and they're always decreasing, that's enough for the series to converge. So from this we prove that the limit of the partial sums, not sub 2n, just sn in general, as n goes to infinity, exists and is finite, and therefore that the series, remember the sequence S sub n represented the um, partial sums of this alternating series, converges. I think it's a really cool result. So that is the proof of the alternating series test.